What's up, everybody? All right, so I'm in Illinois. I have a yogurt load that I picked up in New Berlin, New York. And it was drama. Lots of drama. Um, the story I'm going to tell you is why you need to do a good pre-trip on stuff. And don't drive dangerous stuff. And even if you're chasing money. Because probably somebody who would have been chasing money would have probably taken his trailer and drove it as is. It would have been dangerous. So, I picked up, I got to the shipper. When did I get to them? Two days ago. And um, I got there at 5 o'clock in the evening. The load was supposed to deliver today at 7 a.m. The I went to go pick up the trailer. And the first sign that you know that the equipment is going to be a piece of crap. First sign you know when the equipment is going to be a piece of crap is when you look at the... So on the back behind the bunk on the back of a refrigerator unit is the refrigerator the the, 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 the 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 engine motor that keeps the refrigeration unit that keeps the trailer cold this thing had holes in it and somebody had duct taped it the holes and the duct tape was hanging and closed on some big I mean it looks like somebody probably whoever it was did not adjust their fifth wheel the fifth wheel is what hooks to the trailer you know think that pretty quick like that and it's what's on the tractor and it links the trailer and puts them together. And it looks like they didn't adjust their fifth wheel, so when they backed into it, they backed too close to they even when they turned, they cracked the the um the reefer unit. So for those of you who think about going to refrigerate it, make sure you have enough distance on your fifth wheel. If you just back straight up, you shouldn't back into it. Um, but then as soon as you hook, you need to give yourself you need to adjust your fifth wheel to give it room for your turns okay and you need to do that even if it's a regular drive-in trailer sometimes you're too close so you need to give it some pin spacing for you to um, hook anywho 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 um turn around and um I end up what's the word I want to use I turn around and I ended up um, hooking to this trailer already not having a good vibe a lot of things bad about that whole day first thing is where they had the trailer out it was so tight that I could slide out my door, but I was going to hell. I climbed back in it, so I had to get it back in on the passenger side. I went around to get the landing gear. Landing gear that, that we have a crank. That's all been up, so I'm, you know, jig one trying to bring the landing gear up. I, just not good with the trailer. So the tandems, which are so tandems, are the wheels in the back of the trailer, and these things are on a sliding mechanism. And the reason you can slide them is because you can adjust the weight of the trailer. Because your weight has to be certain amounts at certain parts. So, <laughs> I'm sliding the tandems. And what I noticed was uh, well, I'm watching this guy, watch him. And what I noticed was that as I'm sliding these damn tandems, um, I can't move them. There, I move, I move the trailer out, get into the staging area, which is we're right in front of the dock area, and the, and the and the wheels are moving. So what happens when you're in slide tandems? You have to lock the brakes for the trailer, and you engage the brakes on your tractor so you can you know move. Well, if the brakes are engaged on, excuse me, engage the brakes on the track on the trailer, and then you lease the brakes on your tractor. So then it should just easily slide because the wheels are locked holding it and you can just slide the, sli the slider uh, once the pins are in. Freaking brakes weren't holding the trailer. And the wheels are freely moving with the brakes engaged. Or, um, engaged. So I'm like, what in the hell? So I go back there. I get out took about three times. Not working. I even roll around because sometimes it's just maybe where you, you know, you're leveling. I'm like, uh-uh. The wheels shouldn't be still should be locked. 
and I'm looking, I'm trying to crank the, the head of the thing, and I'm seeing the wheels move. I'm like, oh, the brakes aren't working. So this little Russian dude, I don't know if he's Russian. He had an accent like, I think, Russia. I don't know, somewhere near there. Funny, 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 funny dude, right? He was he was really nice, the trucker. And he owner op. He's like, I help, I help. I'm like, okay. So he said, you stay? I help. I said, okay, I'll stay, you help. He go back there and he's, Brakes on? I said, yeah, the brakes on. Hmm. He climb up on the stairs, he look in, he pull my knob, he said, Brakes? Oh. Hmm. I could, I could, I could. <laughs> I said, no, not good. So, I already know where this is about to go. I know it's going to break down, but for whatever reason, he really wanted to help, so I let him, and I said, you know, you never know, he might discover something. He go back there, he climbs all underneath. I'm like, whoa, man, this guy really helpful. He come back, he's like, hmm. He's like, okay, let air feel, let air feel. Like, okay. Because sometimes if it's not an air enough, now maybe that's why the brakes are holding. So, feel it. He's like, hmm. brakes no work. I said, no. He said, hold on, I called my mechanic. I said, okay, because he owned right. He's on the phone with this guy, and he goes in his side box. He comes out some WD-40. He sprays a little airline. He goes like this, sprays some stuff. He like, okay, cha cha. Breaks no good. I said, yeah, breaks no good. <laughs> All of this is about an hour, okay? He's like, I'm sorry. I said, no, thank you for your help. You have a blessed day. Be safe. So I didn't type up a long but message to our breakdown group. They were actually really good because they got back. They tried to call me, but Ghetto Mobile here. I, as soon as I get my AT&T, I gotta get my AT&T back. Ghetto Mobile Boost. Once you get to a certain point of roaming, they're like, you can't roam no more. You have to be on the network or a network that has them. Otherwise, they stop your roaming data, whatever. I mean, you probably can do a 911. That's it. You can't do anything else because 911 you have to do by federal regulations with the uh, cell phones here in America because I used to work for a cell phone company. So turn around and uh, I couldn't get phone service which is okay they did everything through the Qualcomm which I like I like things written that way there's no question and uh, so I got all the messages through Qualcomm they said when they sent the message saying they were sending breakdown out they sent a guy out from breakdown little guy he was super so he was cool and he's like he's like yeah he got back there he tried to adjust them he's like man your brakes are jacked I said yeah your brakes are jacked on that trailer he said, well, my boss is coming. He, he died about maybe 30, 40 minutes, and then his boss came. Hey, have you said older guy? How you doing, ma'am? I said, fine. He says, okay. He said, we're going to go back. I'm going to take a look, see what's going on. I said, fine. I'm sitting there. He looked. They didn't even have me move the truck anymore. He said, he came back. He looked at me. He said, lady, I don't know what kind of pre-trip or what you did. He said, but it's a good thing you did it. He said, this trailer should not go anywhere. He said, you've been put out of service. He said, I want you to send a message on your Qualcomm, tell them to call me. I have pictures. He said, I don't know if the previous driver drove this in and burn out the brakes on this or if it was just bad in the first place. But the two of the brakes, they had eaten through the drum and then the other ones barely had enough pads. He said, you have nothing to stop this trailer. He said, it's a very good thing you didn't take this up out of here. I say this to y'all because, I mean, it's any, any company this could happen with, because especially when you have large companies, a lot of equipment, even if you had your own, you know, if you had your own, you probably can have a little, a little bit more microscopic view of it. But when you have large companies and people are chasing money so hard, I hate to say it. Yes, it's the company's job to maintain the equipment, but it's also the driver's job and the check systems at the companies to double check the equipment. And, you know, if you know something's wrong with the equipment, I know you're chasing money. You know, I don't want to report it because then I can't get my money for this. Well, is it worth your life? Is it worth so-and-so's life on the road that you don't know? And, you know, I know back in the day I knew people who would take that trailer as is, haul it with the wheels all the way to the back, and try to get it to the customer because they were chasing money that hard in this industry. That's crazy as hell. <laughs> I was telling Trucker Bill, and Trucker Bill's cracking up because he's worked for companies. He said, you know, I made very good money. He says, but I... You had some other Yahoo trucker who didn't report it, who knew the equipment was bad, but they chasing the money so much. He said they were willing to risk lives themselves, everybody else. And I'm not blaming just them. Like I said, it's, to me, it's a mutual. The company needs to check the equipment. I didn't look to see when the inspection. I knew the inspection sticker 
it was good but I can't remember it was good because I saw 18 2018 as long as I see 18 I know it's not 2018 that it's been inspected I just didn't see when the inspections took place so you know I don't know what chat but like told the guy it was funny before he walked away I said yes I knew it was gonna be a bad trailer as soon as I saw the duct tape he said the duct tape I said look at the reefer unit he looked and just busted up laughing all the way to his car <laughs> I was like I knew it was gonna be a bad day bro I knew you know so pre-tripping checking your equipment is is critical I'm not telling you to be out here an hour and a half checking this equipment it's not hard I mean I hadn't even started my pre-trip on the trailer yet that was simply just sliding the tandems and as soon as I saw something wasn't right you know could I chase some money oh I need to be here earlier so I get a better load I got a good run you know it's, it's you know it, it put me off a little bit but I got a pretty good run I got a I have a run coming from Illinois to Utah you know I think they're heading me towards home because I told them I got to be home for a doctor's appointment next next week um on the 17th what's this yeah yeah so I'm, right now I'm rolling hours so I'll be there on the 6th which is Sunday and I'm rolling hours so they're heading me west I can tell but I'm I, right now I am seriously rolling hours right now and I might have to ask for a reset after that because I'm rolling hours my 70 clock is eating up I gotta see what's coming back um yeah yeah so my challenge to you guys excuse me my challenge to you guys is to uh go ahead and uh hmm, allergies are kicking my allergies are cold I can't tell you which one it's, it's just make sure you, you double checking I'm gonna do that women in check and I keep saying I'm gonna do it because I saw it um and I'll probably do another video here in a minute I may do it. I'm gonna try to do it here in a minute. I'm hungry right now. So I got a, I got a salad in there. Or either that or I'm gonna try to order. Oh, I had to order food to the truck last, or the other night when I was at, when all this happened. Because I, all I have on here is fiber bars, dude. This morning I luckily stopped at, uh, well, I, was, I slept last night at Flying J in, is that Ohio? Was that in Ohio? I can't remember if it was Ohio. I think it was Ohio. Oh, I stopped at Flying J. My nose peels, y'all. Forgive me, but my nose peels in the summer. I stopped at a Flying J, and uh, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, I stopped at Flying J off of ninety, off of ninety, and I had just hit ninety. I'm gonna let y'all know something too. In Ohio, the travel plazas on the toll road, them bad boys got showers for truckers, y'all. I remember them saying they were gonna do it, and they've done it. So. If you're a truck driver, they got showers at the Toll Road Travel Plazas in Ohio. I don't know if that's all of them, but the one I stopped at when I had to check some messages and went to the bathroom, they have showers. Anyway, just so you know. And I knew they were, it was coming back when I was on the road back in 2010. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow I head towards Utah on Sunday. I'm going to be in Utah Sunday. So I pick this load up tomorrow at uh, tomorrow at time. next load I have it picks up tomorrow at three o'clock. So and I'm only a hundred miles from there, so that's a couple hours, hour and a half. Well, I'm in Illinois, so I'm gonna have to look and see where this is at. Because if it's anywhere near the Chicago area, you might as well just say, Yeah, you're gonna leave about three hours early. Oh my god. Even today coming in here, I really would have gotten here by three thirty. But I hit construction zones and traffic. And they said, I know we were sitting on the park on the freeway. And I got here, I had estimated. I said, you know what? You need to overestimate this. Because I was trying to get here at 1530. And I then said, well, 1630. And I said, you know, you just want to say 5 o'clock. So I got here. I got here literally at 446, or 4.36 p.m. Drove into the gate. Anyway. I'll do the women trucking video here soon. Peace.